Hey folks, this is Jesse from DIY Music and today we have a new project. And it is another type of cello tar. One that I've done before, but I figured out how to do it right this time. So, welcome to Bowstick 2.0. So, the original bow stick was based on this exact same knockoff backpacker guitar. So these things are sold on eBay and Amazon for like $35, 30 to $35, somewhere like that. You get natural, black, different colors. Anyways. But the reason why this is an ideal candidate to be a bowed instrument is because of how narrow the body is. And with that, you get completely unhindered bow access. So, as you can hear, this is an acoustic instrument. So we're gonna make an acoustic four string backpacker cello tar. Let's go. So it gets out of the box, it comes with maybe the cheapest gig bag in the history of the world. Strap for said gig bag, I think. Unless it's a, uh, wait, no, I think this is supposed to be a, uh, strap it on. Not sure how that works. Extra strings, gigantic picks, no idea. And that's what comes in the backpacker guitar box. So I don't really care about the playability of this thing as is, um, to be perfectly clear. And yes, it has a tailpiece, uh, but the last one I had, it's so thin that it the string tension bent it. Um, so that's not going to work for us. Uh, it has the standard, like, three all together per side tuners. And like I said, you do not have to replace these. Um, so the official price for this build is not going to include tuners because you can just cut off the last one on each of these and just use these tuners. However, I got sealed replacement tuners with uh, black knobs because I thought it would look nice. So what else do you need other than tuners for this build? Uh, I need some cello strings, quarter scale or half scale, doesn't matter what, three quarter or full size bridge, I got some strap buttons, technically don't need them because it comes with one and then you can tie the other end to the head. Rosin, half scale cello bow, and then, I mean it's possible that this tailpiece would work, but I prefer these trapeze style tailpieces, so that's what I'll be using. And. Uh, yeah, other than the fingerboard, that's it. All right, so the bridge on this thing is perfectly serviceable for playing it as a guitar. But it is flat. And what we need, this is the bridge off my other cello tar. We need a curved bridge for bow access. So we gotta make one of these. You can already see, I'm gonna be going for something like that. Not with those strings, of course. So we don't need this bridge. You don't need these strings or these crazy picks. A strap, uh, to be decided. Rosin, bow, those are for later. 
strap buttons, maybe for later. Tuners, bridge, strings, tailpiece. So first thing we need to do is remove the strings, remove the tailpiece, remove the strap button, remove the tuners, remove the nut. Just a few things. Now wait, should I play this first? Uh, yes. Don't use it as a guitar. Turn it into a cello guitar. <laughs> These strings don't don't even deserve the courtesy of being tuned down. Just gonna cut them. Alright, so there's the unhindered body. Now let's get these whew, tuners out. <laughs> the uh, grommets are already jumping out on their own. They want out! One of my cats wants out also, apparently. So... Each of the sides of these tuners has four screws. I'm just going to remove them and then cut down the headstock so that it is four, four tuners instead of six, just like we did in the build videos for the Cello tar version three. So so far, this is this build is going super fast and easy. It's hoping that it would be a lot uh, easier, so that folks who want to build their own cello tar won't be so put off. The other one obviously takes a long time and is pretty complicated. So I. Understand people not wanting to do it, but uh, yeah, there we go. I think I probably still have <laughs> the tuners from the last bow stick I made in my parts box. <laughs> Look familiar, okay? So, there we go. All the tuners are out. Uh, let's see the nut. It's uh, glued in pretty good. Sometimes they're just barely hanging in there, but uh, this one definitely needs some needs some uh, convincing. Well, not too much convincing. That wasn't bad. All right, so. Uh, note this neck has no truss rod. Not that I would expect it to at this price point, but anyways, just be aware. Alright, so here's the headstock shape that we're dealing with. So let's get out let's get out our new tuners and see what uh kind of size mismatch the guitar mod gods have blessed us with today. Never can tell what it's going to be. So, see that's all the washers and all that dealio. So this is, this is a 2x2 two two headstock, so if they sent me the right thing I should have Two left and two right tuners, and it looks like I do. That's good. And as usual, they don't fit. So we're gonna have to make the tuner holes bigger, as we pretty much always have to. All right, so I got my headstock shape page from the templates here. And I'm gonna cut out the three by three 
tuner headstock shape. Thing to remember about this is that you want to put it as high up as you can so you're getting the most material left there as possible. So you're gonna to want to take your headstock and sneak the template right up to those two tuners, those two tuner holes that you're removing. So There you go. It's like a, it's like a little clone. Right, so we need to drill out the holes, to make them bigger for the new tuners, and we need to cut the end of the headstock off. So let's do that. This looks like it's about the right size for the new tuners. So let's see. Safety glasses. And it's a bit too small still. Wood is very soft. I'm pretty sure it's pine or something. So all I had to do was rock the drill in a circular motion and it enlarged the hole uh, to where I needed it to be. I have uh, some tear out there. I'm gonna put some wood filler in it. And then we'll be painting over the end of the headstock. Uh, repainting the headstock once we cut the end off. So it's pretty cold down here in the basement, so I'm honestly not sure if it's the right temperature range for paint and wood filler and all this stuff, but hey, what you gonna do? It is what it is. These are ukulele tuners, which actually might be a problem because the headstock on a ukulele is thinner than it is on a guitar, so we might have some issues if he's not being tall enough. But we'll deal with that as we come across those issues. There's your rough shape. Now we'll sand that to uh, smooth it out. <coughs> Have sandpaper on your sander. Yep, kind of important. <laughs> All right, so it's a little smoother. To a higher number sandpaper grit. Smooth out what we've sanded more. It's feeling better. All right, 
right, so now what I should do next, so what I should do next is do a much higher grit sandpaper uh, to polish this smoother. But I'm gonna go see if I can find it, and if I can't find it in like 30 seconds, I'm just gonna skip that and paint it as is. I found some of this super high grit stuff. So I'm just gonna... do a pass on here. Smooth. Smooth my sanding out. More. get us a bit closer to a uh, factory look though of course it will never actually look <coughs> like it was factory closer and I'm kind of rounding over my sand edges just a little bit here <coughs> Very smooth. So let's go and paint this thing. All right. Well, that now has a four-string two-by-two cello tar headstock. So what's next? Well, the water slide paper I ordered um, won't be here for a few days. So let us focus on tailpiece, strap buttons, and that sort of thing. Because um, we could do tuners, but then we still have to clear coat the headstock after applying the decals, so not sure if that's a thing to do now. Let's see real quick if the uh, that's already a no. <laughs> These ukulele tuners uh, grommets will thread in here. It's not looking like it. So buy guitar tuners, not uke tuners. My mistake. Sure look nice though, right? All right, tailpiece. So, this actually fits right over the existing hole. So that's cool. Um, there's a curve on the back of that. This is not curved. Could bend that. I don't, I don't care. So there's a more robust main screw and then a couple outside screws. <clears throat> so. Good idea to have something soft between the top of the thing and the tailpiece because otherwise it just kind of clonks against it over and over and over again. Clonks, yes, it's a technical term. Sorry, this isn't the best angle for you to see what I'm doing, but there's a much better angle for me to actually do it. It's often a paradox or conundrum or something about building stuff for video. And it's at this point that Jesse realizes that in fact a <coughs> strap button needed to go in that hole. <coughs> so, got a little 
pack of strap buttons because I have a lot of things that need them. Uh, <clears throat> this has little plastic or rubber black grommets and a thicker screw than the one I just put in, which is good because that means when I back this screw out, the new one will cut a little further into the wood and uh, not have trouble hanging in there as it would if it were the same size or smaller. So the screw goes into the strap button and you put your spacer washer thingy there and it will live between the strap buttons and the tailpiece and we screw that in which I can't actually do at that angle but I'm just showing you sorry gotta go back to this angle again the main screw is now in there with the strap button the way I intended to do it so now we have the two outside screws. We can just use the ones that came with uh, for that. And I need to poke a starter hole for those. And just stabbed it with a screw. That worked. Yep, they're both going in. I'm fairly certain that this one did not actually go into the end pin block and it just went through the thin wall of plywood, but what you're gonna do? Two, two of those is probably sufficient for the string tension, uh, considering that it's broken at a 90 degree angle. So anyway, there's that. I'm going to Keep that under there, not beat up the top any more than I have to. So it does look like the bridge is going to be right there, um, just in front of this tailpiece. So, um, once again, there are shorter tailpieces you can get, and that would be better. In our case, looks like we're probably just going to have to wrap around the top of the tailpiece bar and back up uh, if we don't want the cello string winding to be sitting on the bridge. All right, so that was sort of the immediate gratification thing to do. Uh, but the main bulk of the work for this is making and installing the fingerboard, just like any other cello tar. So let's do that. Well, it's not a slick custom option, but I figured out how to get the tailpiece bar further back using strap buttons as spacers. Mm -hmm. I think it'll work, so whatevs. Alright, checking the neck fingerboard template fit. Terminates right at the edge of the sound hole. It starts right there at the edge of the fingerboard, so... Yeah, that's looking pretty good to me. Alright, well this is the shortest length of 4 inch PVC that the local hardware store here had, which is a 5 foot length. Um, you should only buy 2 feet by the foot, shouldn't cost that much if you can get it from a place that does that. This place did not. So, um, so here I got my fingerboard template and uh, I'm trying something different this time, something that I recommended but haven't actually tried yet, which is uh, the new, the current template has this inside line which gives you all the intersections for drilling the holes for the frets. So this time around, what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to tape this template down all the way around, fully tape, tape it down, and then use, I'm using the center line to line up the center dots on the template to make sure that we are uh, getting a straight section of the pipe because if we don't, the whole thing will be twisted and it won't, won't line up right. So, taping this down all the way around and then I'm going to drill all the holes first before cutting it, which I've never done before. 
I think it'll be a lot easier. So I won't have to remark anything because the template already has all the points on it that I need to use for drilling. So let's see how it goes. All right, so there we go, fully taped down. So now we have to drill each of the intersections of this inner line and each fret, two per fret. And then we have to drill all the dot marker holes and the two front screw holes. So that's a lot of drilling. <sighs> Let's get to it. So just like last time, I'm working in my father-in-law's basement, so uh, I have no idea what's the right drill bit size for this. Uh, so I'm going to take a couple that look like they're in the ballpark and take one of my zip ties, four inch black, make sure it's smooth on one side. I'm going to drill couple of test holes in a part of the pipe that I won't need later and just see how well it fits. Safety glasses first. Important for cutting wood, not as important for drilling, but still. Sometimes keyless chucks just kind of suck. Maybe I'm just not strong enough to tighten them appropriately. Who knows? Okay, so that is a little tight. But the other thing is these four inch drip ties I got from AutoZone. They definitely feel different to me than the ones I typically use, which is I get from Lowe's Home Depot. Uh, let's compare them real quick. So, oh, wow, yeah, these are different. Um, huh. So the ones I bought today from AutoZone are like twice as wide. These are Autocraft, and this one is Utilitech. <laughs> hmm. Now the question is, is that okay? It'd be like having a jumbo fret? Or is this a problem? It's also a little shorter and the grippy area on the back isn't quite as long. Ooh. Hmm. 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 I need to think about this for a bit. I need to make a Walmart Lowe's run. All right. So I got some different cable ties. I believe these are the original width. Yes. Those appear to be the same. So, yeah, it fits fine in that hole, but it seems a little big, so I'm gonna see if I can try find a smaller drill bit. All right, I found a smaller drill bit. So, let's drill another test hole. Do it on the other side. Smaller. Yep, there we go. That's the one we want. All right, so now to drill a bazillion holes. Now remember, we want to drill the holes perpendicular to the surface of the PVC. But then when we cut out the fingerboard, we're going to want to have it perpendicular to the up axis. So 
the holes will be more like this, and then when we cut it, it'll be more like that. Now I'm gonna do one more thing real quick, which is I'm going to poke a stabby hole uh, at each of those points. Like I've said in my other videos, the proper tool for this is an awl, but I don't have one of those. So I'm just doing this because I want to make sure that the drill bit is going to center exactly at the intersection of the lines. So it's looking, it's looking good. And I can be a lot more accurate making the indentation with this thing than I can just starting the hole with no guide of any kind. So I think this will be a good way to go. Alright, now I'm just gonna do the same to all the dot position marks. The accuracy of these is far, far less important, but while we're here, we might as well. Even though it would be totally fine to just drill these with no starter hole of any kind. Now, let's do this thing for real. <clears throat> Alright, so that's all the holes drilled. And uh, so, yeah, doing that just with the template uh, taped down there, that was a it was a really significant time savings, so I would definitely recommend doing that. <coughs> so now we need to cut this bad boy out. Safety glasses, as always. Now the question is, is cutting along the edge of the template can work as well as drilling face out with the template did? I'm guessing not. But let's find out. Oops, I started tearing it up. So always make sure to unplug saws before you mess with the blade. Not really sure why that came out, but uh, gotta put it back in. Now I need to be able to cut across, so I'm going to make a turnout and kind of cut out a circle. Should be it. Yep. There we are. And I don't need the template anymore because all the holes are already drilled, unlike doing it the other way. So that's it for the PVC pipe. You see, we got that nice blue center line right down the middle. So the next thing we'll be sanding and cleaning this up. Headed in the right direction here. All right, safety glasses. And the roughest grit sandpaper. All right, 
so this is smoothing out rather nicely but <laughs> I just remembered that I forgot to drill forgot to drill the two holes for the nut so let's see if my uh, template is still around here <coughs> and it is lucky me so we can line it up to the holes that we drilled using it and then use our stabby thing all right <coughs> now we can drill those missing holes all the holes we need. So while we're here, let me countersink all these. <laughs> when you set the tool aside in a special place, which means you'll never see it again. I found it. <sighs> all right, so now we need to countersink all of the position marker holes and the two screw holes that go in the very front. So let's do that. That's all of the counter sinking that we need. Now let's put a finer grip on this thing. Try to smooth out the work we've done. Alright, now I'm just gonna go over with this high grit sandpaper. I smooth things out. To be clear, we are still going to be doing the uh, the wood faux wood grain finish. So this smoothing is just for the structural shaping, but then the actual final surface finish is going to do with the rough uh, sandpaper on the palm sander to create that faux wood grain. So is there even a point to this? I don't know. Seems seemed like a good thing to do. So now let's get our rough sandpaper. And this will be the <coughs> this will be the texture pass. So we'll do this really light, and this is just to bring out that faux wood grain. So here we go. And when you're done, you should, you should see a really fine, detailed pattern of little lines. Alright, and then the whole surface should feel kind of like a bit soft touch when you're done. Like, it should feel slightly fuzzy. That means that you're done. So, let's go paint this thing. So now the next step is go and fret the fingerboard and the way that I show you in this video here. And uh, then come on back and let's keep going. All right, so I got my headstock decals printed out and coated in acrylic sealant. So, see which ones look best. I think it's these two. I'm doing two of these at oh, same time here. <coughs> Got my bowl of water.
I've got my bow stick here ready. Mm. I don't know where my cello tar is, so I'll go look for that in a minute. <clears throat> Anyways, so I'm going to cut. Say you're not supposed to cut into the graphic, but what I did was I, because I'm doing black on black, I made these um, ridiculously oversized. So I have some uh, fairly substantial bleed <clears throat> that I don't really care about. So. Let that soak in the water. Immediately curled up. I don't know what that means. I don't think the last one did that. Well, anyway, let me find, uh, let me find the cello tar. All right, found it. All right, looks like it's already coming off its backing. So, <clears throat> I go ahead and. I think we're supposed to use a hair dryer to dry that. Um, but I'm not going to worry about that quite yet. Let's just do the cello tar one. The white is definitely, uh, the white backing is definitely the way to go on a dark headstock. It's uh, showing up really good. And when I did this previously and tried to do like Silver Sharpie on the back, it was a disaster. So, this is definitely the way to go. Once we have these dry and set in position, then we're gonna have to clear coat them to protect them, keep them on there. All right, so, night's drying time later. Now we have a headstock <coughs> decal. <laughs> so, I've been looking at uh, these ukulele tuners, and I'm not quite ready to give up on them yet. I think if we don't use the washer, <coughs> that the we should be able to get this guy down in there. <coughs> so, and I realized that because. That's exactly what I did on this cello tar, which I'm pretty sure also has uke tuners. So, <coughs> so I'm just going to try to dial that in there without the washer, and hopefully that will do the job. So, got them all pushed in all the way, so now just need to try to get all these guys to uh, thread down in there. I think it's, they're already pretty stable, just because of how tight the fit is on the back side, but if I want to get these seated down low enough that they're below the, uh, the hole where the end of the string goes in. <laughs> Otherwise, that could be functionally problematic. You can see the string holes on all four, all three of those, so that's solid. Maybe this guy needs to get banged in a little more. Four of those are in now. If the thingies screw down enough that you can get to the string holes, that's all we need. So, so this guy's ready for the fretboard installation now. And so these screws, 
they're not just cosmetic like they're equally spaced because that is what lets you correct and and straighten out the fretboard as you go. So, because these aren't seating down, we are failing to uh, to get that effect. Um, I think what needs to happen I think what needs to happen is I need to go to the hardware store and get some longer number four screws and and just kind of start over on this because I'm just not seating well enough um, and I think it's I think it's just that they're too short um, to dig down into this material. I think there's some kind of weird uh, veneer or something that is the original black surface of the fingerboard underneath and that seems to be creating some really strange issues and requiring the screw to be longer than I typically have to have it. So I think we need probably one inch screws. It looks like the fretboard's a little low here. Once again you have to kind of just to get a straight, a straight uh, fretboard. I don't have a straight edge on me at the moment, so I'm just approximating. I agree with my eye that that was pretty straight, so um, I guess I'll just use the uh, number four one inchers the rest of the way. And then uh, we use our normal number fours, these guys here at the end, because we're going to have to hot glue those in if they're off the end of the fingerboard. <coughs> you got to be careful not overdo screwing these things in, because they will affect the curvature of the fingerboard. So you always got to be aware of uh, how each screw is changing the shape. Okay. And then, obviously, once you, uh, once you string it up and you're doing adjustments, you, know, you can tweak these as necessary uh, once we're in that stage. Really liking these. Uh, really liking these uh, number four one inches. I think they're the way to go on this. So yeah, looks like I'm. Uh, looks like I'm going with all. Uh, all number four one inch. So there we go. I have an installed fretboard. All right, so the next thing is we need to put in the string retainer bar. I have a silver one for this. To match the mostly silver hardware. Honestly, not sure why I didn't just do silver tuners. Eh, yeah. Just seemed like a good idea at the time. Don't want to cover up the logo. So I'm just going to do it just behind. Just realized something, the song and I got run over by a reindeer, which my sister and I are doing as our half of our holiday matchup this year. It's uh, it's actually the same as Dominic the donkey in that it discusses Santa sleigh as something that rides on the ground. I didn't really realize that until just now. So yeah, Dominic does because it says that uh, 
the reason that Santa takes Dominic is because the reindeer can't climb the hills of Italy. So clearly ground-based transportation. And then if Grandma was run over by a reindeer, clearly that also is ground-based. So both of those songs, the non-magical sled variety, it's interesting. I hadn't realized that. Okay, so what are we gonna do now? All right, well, so we need to string this bad boy up. I do think you tuners were the right call. It doesn't feel top heavy, which is nice. So the question is, is the geometry similar enough that I can just use this bridge off my other cello tar? Looks like the answer to that is no. Looks like it's going to have to be shorter. <clears throat> but by how much? Well, using this bridge to start out with will help us determine that. Start off with our two outer strings, because that way the bridge will sit in there. And then uh, we currently have a stack of uh, nuts acting as a spacer for the bridge, but uh, that's just nuts. Yeah, it doesn't look that great. Uh, I was using was using strap buttons and spacers previously. If you saw that on Instagram, um, so I don't know. We'll just see. We'll see. I'm not. I'm not even sure how much how much space we need. So finalize all that as we go. This is always an exciting moment when the instrument produces its first sounds. And this is just a quarter scale cello string set. Um, I found that's the uh, best balance of uh, tension uh, for the for standard EADG tuning for these instruments. Um, if you alter the scale length or anything else that would affect that, you're on your own, but uh, that's what I found to be the best standard. So there's six slots on this tailpiece. And what I usually do is on the first string up, you kind of see where those slots make the strings fall on the neck. And it looks good on the uh, G string, but this low E is definitely not in the right place. It's too far toward the middle of the fingerboard, so I'll loosen it up and move it over to the farthest base position on the tail. And that should let it naturally line up better with the fingerboard. position seems to be somewhere in there. So obviously that sucks. It's a functional acoustic instrument. So that's good. Well, let's get the other two strings on and kind of see where we're at. Okay, so now all four strings are on. This is all shaping up pretty well. Definitely getting close. And uh, Obviously a far, far less intensive build than the uh, Cello Tar 3O. So this, this bow stick I think is definitely going to be a really great starter option. 